So to finish off, we're going to look at five brief examples um, of some organ music um, and discuss some of the issues around them and um, different ways in which they can be written in a more helpful way. So the first example um, asks for a sudden decrease um, from forte to piano. Um, as well as the logistics of losing lots of stops all in one go, um, which may involve um, pressing numerous buttons or making a quick stab at pushing in some stops. Um, there's also the chance that the initial um, piano chords can get lost in the residual acoustic of the loud music which precedes it. I will play the example um, as written and, and see if you can hear what I mean uh, when it suddenly goes piano. So for a second or so there, some of the harmonies got a little bit blurred whilst the echo of the loud music was still going on. I have the advantage here that we have general pistons um, and I'm quite e easily able to set those up. So I was able to make the change just by pressing one button. Um, but let me show you what would happen if I didn't have that and I would suddenly have to make the change to piano. You can see it's a bit of a scramble so that's not really advisable um, where you don't have um, that capability to, to suddenly lose a lot of stops all in one go. Um, one thing you can do as we mentioned before is to have your loud registration set up on one manual and your quiet one on the other um, but remember that your pedals will need to come down as well and the pedal couplers so there will always be um, some needs to, um, to get rid of some stops there. Another um, issue with this example is that the composer hasn't actually specified how they want um, the chords uh, to be articulated. Um, so they could be played legato. But again, because they're quite dense chords, it's quite difficult to achieve that legato. And, and because of the loud dynamic in the, in the acoustic, it, the harmonies become a bit blurry. Um, so what is um, more useful is to articulate the chords um, and there are different ways to do this, either they can all be um, articulated separately or a slur and a detaché. Um, so there's also the question of how to create drama with this. At the moment, it's just four crotchets in a bar. Um, there's no uh, rhythmic momentum um, or, or, or that, that drama driving it through. Um, so one thing could be to alternate the right hand and the left hand in a sort of Takata style uh, figuration like this. So on to our second example, um, and this asks for a solo and an accompaniment, um, but yet the dynamic markings are actually uh, specified to be the same, um, and it doesn't say what the solo line should be, what sort of sound um, it should be. It's usual for the solo line to be at least one dynamic mark up from the accompaniment to help it stand out. Let me play the example as written. So because the two hands are at the same dynamic there, and actually I'd chosen to play them on, on a similar sound, so both of them were on one flute sounds, um, it's not quite as interesting as if the composer had specified uh, for one hand to be on flutes and the other one to be on a reed stop um, on, and on a slightly stronger dynamic so that it really stands out um, like this.
As we've already mentioned, um, that broken chord style, um, which the left hand is written in here, um, on the organ can sound quite thin because we're not able to use the sustain pedal to, to build the chords up. Um, so what could be helpful here is to have, have the pedals um, sustaining through to create and, and the left hand then sustaining the broken chord um, to create um, a build up of some harmonies like this. Or another thing would just be to have the chords sustained throughout. Um, don't be afraid of actually being um, quite uh, static with some of your music. Um, going back to the music Olivier Messiaen, for instance, um, sometimes he will sustain a chord throughout um, you know, half a page worth of music and it creates this lovely stillness, this lovely ambience. Um, so it's possible just to, to not have the rocking figuration and just have the sustained chords like this. So on to our next example, um, and this has some octave doublings in the right hand, um, which um, are quite superfluous in performance um, and can lead to some inaccuracies um, when played. Um, let me demonstrate as it's written. So you may have been able to tell that I was, I caught some extra notes there in my endeavours to play staccato chords. Um, as I say, on the organ, um, the keys are often slightly bigger than on the piano and um, it, it's, it's quite easy to do that. Um, it's just as a, a effective in this example to lose the lower part of the right hand. Um, if we've got some of the doublings, we've got the eight four twos, we can add a 16 foot, um, which will make that lower octave sound as well. Um, and this will lead to more um, clarity, m more control um, from the performer um, like this. The other thing with this example is um, the repetition in the pedals. Um, as we talked about before, some of the um, uh, bigger stops, um, the lower pitch stops, uh, sometimes take a while to speak. So, so sometimes the dotted rhythm isn't coming out clearly there, um, even if you play it um, alternating the feet. So one thing might be to alternate the octaves there in the pedals instead. Or the other way around. Which will... Um, ensure that the notes uh, speak rhythmically. On to our next example, um, and this has got uh, the pedals in octaves throughout, and also the left hand um, doubling uh, the pedal notes. Uh, let me show you. So doubling the pedal part in octaves um, is not a bad thing to do uh, per se, um, but do remember that um, if you jump more than, more than about a third, um, you will physically um, uh, not be able to play that legato. So jumping from the C to the G flat at the beginning of this melody is always going to have a little bit of a gap. So you're not going to be able to achieve a legato there. Um, likewise, with the left hand doubling the pedal part, um, if the stops are coupled through to the pedals, um, they will already be sounding. Um, so a, a C played on the swell is going to be, you're not going to hear the addition of the pedal coming in there if it's already sounding um, on the manual. 
Um, so what is um, an improvement in this example is to lose the bottom notes, um, lose the doubling of the left hand, um, which will uh, enable you to play more legato as well. So here's an example of that. Um, I'm also just going to thin out the pedal parts. I'm going to add a 32 foot um, and just play in one octave. Um, and you can hear that uh, the effect is uh, much the same. So on to our final example. Um, as we have already discussed, um, it's extremely difficult to open the swell box uh, when you've got both feet in use. Um, this is the case here. So the composer has asked for the left foot and the right foot both to be playing, um, but for somehow for us to achieve a crescendo as well. Um, we can ha add the stops um, but as, as I've said, whilst, when the chords are being sustained, um, it's not always um, particularly accurate where, where those stops are going to um, click in and, and um, it may create a slightly clunky effect. So I'm going to show this example um, and I'm going to try the crescendo um, as I can't open the swell box. I'm going to try it by adding stops as we go along and see what I mean about uh, the sort of clunky addition um, to, to the registration. There are two ways we could uh, change this example to make it um, more effective. Uh, firstly would be to um, stop the doubling of the pedals and move one of those notes to the left hand which will enable us to open the swell box. Um, this would therefore sound like this. Or the other way is to sustain all the chords as they build up so that we, we create um, a crescendo through the chord thickening as, as we go up. <laughs> 